Hi, it's Michael from Culture Talk and Tours, and we are here this afternoon for our second opening of the day at River Art Gallery. I have been here before to see the show two shows ago, but I missed the last show. Today's show is called The Feast, and it is a group show with eight artists. Let's go have a look. Hi, it's Michael and I'm back inside of River Art Gallery and I'm here with a fellow Canadian, Taiwanese Canadian, Ishan Lee, and he's going to show us some of his work. So, Ishan, thank you for taking the yeah, time to be with us. No problem, thank you guys for doing this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and we are here at River Art and uh, yeah, like I uh, have a few of my paintings along with friends of mine over here. So, a lot this of is yours uh, right here. This is mine. Okay. Yes. It's called uh, Title Dead. Cinderella's curfew. Okay. Um, highly saturated colors and acrylic paint. Oil on oil on linen. Oil on linen. Interesting. Right. Okay. So I recently um, came back from um, this little vacay that I did in North America. Right. Where I popped by Washington D.C. Went to the National Museum. Right. I've been a fan of Gus and through like since time. But right. I've seen such a large collection of works in real life right. was definitely different and right. very inspired by that trip. A lot of my thoughts are still trying to sink in, yeah, still, you're processing, yeah. so to say. Okay. But um, I feel like there's traces of that influence in this specific piece, okay. I'd say. And is this new to you to be painting in oil? Is it usually oil or...? Funny that you ask because I started painting at a really young age and mostly in oils to be honest. Okay. And then for the past four to five years I've dedicated my practice to still Western paintings but uh, mostly with acrylics. Okay. Sometimes with some pencil crayons, with layers and collages right. and whatnot. But I haven't painted oils prior to this year for a good four to five years. Okay. So this is actually the this is one of the first times that I'm showing my oil on canvas, oil on linen, okay. rather. And I ask that because the color is so vibrant and I know a lot of artists are often say that the oil palette, the colors is kind of more muted and natural. Right. And so if you're doing a more kind of pop or modern art, then you would usually use acrylic. I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, acrylic is, in some ways, it is definitely a more efficient medium. Right. Um, it dries fast, especially right. in this super fast-paced era that we've been living in. Right. You uh, you finish a piece, you wrap it up, you be able to send it to a foreign country where you're launching your show the next day. Right. Um, with oils, it's allowing me to really take more time with my process. Okay. Allow me to sit with my paintings, live with my paintings for a bit longer. Right. Uh, gives me the ability to move things around if I'm not satisfied right. with what I'm seeing. Okay. So, uh, but um, you were mentioning about the palette, and yes, acrylic does give you all these bright neon colors, but so does oils. You know, you just gotta really expand your palette. I guess for most of my friends and who are also painters living out in North America, we stick to the talons, the uh, the gamblings, the whatnots. But uh, Hawaii. 
Yeah. Holbein, Japanese brand. Right. Uh, have all sorts of pastel uh, oil colors right. and the options out there. So just, you know, really break out of your comfort zone. Look at, look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't always just hit up your local art supply store. No. You know, there's so much more out there. <laughs> get out, look for things. The next question you were saying you work on it, you think of, are you working on one piece at a time and you finish it or you've got several canvases? I do work. That is a great question. I think that is a very essential question. I, I, I do start off with multiple canvases. Okay. Um, but then I feel like the practice nowadays, I have been trying to close or to finish each individual, in each individual piece on its own. Okay. Um, bit of a perfectionist, if yeah. you can honor really yeah. tell. Right. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, uh, it's a pro I and it has a lot of cons yeah, to it. Yeah, it's a clear to a trade of being an artist. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm uh, too controlling sometimes. Right. I and mean, that's something that I'm learning to slowly let go. Because if it is oil, we just met with an artist who's painting an acrylic. Right. And he doesn't use oil because he wants it finished. But if it's oil, then he can go back and change things. And then he sometimes is messing it up. For so sure. That's why I'm mostly pure making, but when I do paint, I am acrylic. So you're pro so you're a process based artist. Yes. So you do work on multiple yes. paintings at the same time. Or yeah. artworks at, yeah, at the same time. time. I'm doing sculpture, I even do weaving, I do batik. So I can't wait to see your art. Yeah, I know. Come to my next show. Okay. If you're a gallery well, out there. <laughs> yeah. Or tell Ella from River Art to give me a show. So oh, this one is yours, and you were saying these are. This is my OG, Peter uh, Chan. Peter Chan. Um, is, is he going to be here later? He, I've seen him in, in Hong Kong in August. I was just with him out in LA like two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, Peter's a Canadian, uh, Cantonese artist, born in Hong Kong, grew up in Toronto. Right. Like this guy was popping even when I was still in school. So right. it's just so flattering that we was able to be friends and to be able to show together. Yeah. I feel like this is probably our fourth or fifth time showing together. It's uh, it's been a minute since I've known Peter. And these are oil on paper. Oil on paper. Wow, you guys doing the oil, it's bringing Peter, it back. Peter, we're bringing it back. Bringing it back. Peter is known for painting these super highly meticulous, well rendered uh, oil, oil paintings. Uh, within recent years, he's been working on his modular series. Wow, and so cool. if you recognize this, this is the first time that Mass is doing this. It's a Taiwan special art. Oh. This is a beetle nut. Oh, interesting. You know what like, that yeah, was? Yeah, I know it's, like chum, it's like yeah. chewing tobacco. Yes, I know right. it. Cool. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's. I go see that every time I go to Taipei. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. So you really have to look at it. I just. Walk by, pass it. I do like Mad John. I like the online one that I do. I am interested in, but I didn't see that detail. But so that's kind of like a Taiwan touch for sure that he's added to it. For okay. sure. So this is a friend of yours, Peter. Peter Chan. Peter Chan, Canadian Cantonese. Get up on IG. Peter yeah. Chan Art. Okay. I feel like I think that's his. I think that is his handle. Peter Chan. Chan is in C H A N. Okay. Art. We'll find everyone on Instagram. For sure. And this. This is more of me. More of you. Oh, people are really coming through. So um, yeah, I'm busy. Okay. we gonna have to wrap this wrap up soon. Up. So this is again oil. This is again oil and linen. Wow. Uh, with this body of work, I'm really dabbling into the idea of Dada. Right. I've always like been fascinated by Cyrilla's artworks, and I'm going to his predecessor. Right. The Dada idea of the object doesn't fully uh, conveys what. Uh, uh, well, how should I put it? Um, we don't give things meanings, like we see things without really knowing what they are. Right. So I'm painting things in its most basic forms. Right. But still like a pretty surrealist touch to it, right. I guess. Um, so you're finding really your interest in everyday mundane, objects? Yeah. Like I quite like objects. this one behind it where it's like the back of a canvas. Yeah, it's called, I, I think I know the title of this piece. I'm so bad with my own titles, but right. this piece was called uh, Dissatisfaction. Okay. It's coming from a very genuine place. Yes. Uh, had to gesso over more than 20 canvases wow. this this year in my Tape studio. Okay. I just really wasn't happy with the results that I've been getting. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, you know, because then but there's it's so quite, there's, quite interesting. There's so much more than just the back of a painting. It's the scribbly lines. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it's it's the underpaint coming through. It is um, texture. And then it's kind of like the monochromatic palette. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Uh, it is like me finally signing my own painting. Right. In the front. Right. Like I never do that. Okay. So continuously trying to challenge myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the opening. He is very busy. We were at an opening last Saturday night again. Thank you so much for your time. You. We are in touch. I'm going to get your Instagram and everything. Yes, sir. And uh, if you do have a studio space, we should do a studio visit. Type A. I'd love to do that. I'd love to see up. where everything is made. So let's see if we can find some more artists at the show at River Art The Feast. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Michael's here and I am back with Tessar Lowe, one of the artists here at the Feast at River Art Gallery. Tessar, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you. I love your work. This is one of your paintings behind us. Yes. Uh, can you tell us something about it? Uh, I can tell you a lot about it. Okay, tell maybe, us a lot. Maybe. <laughs> the condensed cold Okay, house. yeah. Well, I, I had been... Uh, Working with, um, well, okay, I made a return to using oil painting okay. a little bit, uh, maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. And I was doing a lot of sort of um, getting reacquainted with, with oil paints again. Okay. It had been about 10 years since okay. I last worked with oils. And, and in the midst of just trying to figure it out, I, was, I wasn't trying to think so much about you know what I was trying to say I was just trying to get used to the medium okay but sort of naturally what was happening was I was just you know drawing things that kind of came up to came to mind and, and in that time I uh, my son who's uh, turning four soon he, he was really crazy about trains okay so I was just drawing trains you know it, it's just like daily train you know, like it's train, train, choo choo, choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. So I'm drawing trains, and and I found that it naturally turned into this kind of like um, underlying uh, structural framework for a lot of the drawings that I did. So okay. what I started doing was drawing trains, and then drawing things over the trains, and sort of trying to negotiate what was happening in the spaces between and the, the new shapes that were being formed with these two things overlapping okay and so essentially that is uh, this this painting is um, there's a there's a steam train under it and then I, this was one of the pieces that quite a little bit later on into uh, you know returning to oil painting I wanted to reintroduce uh, sort of like a, a figure ish like a right. not, not exactly a a realistic figure but right. something that suggested a figure and so right. I, I wanted to overlay this sort of like I think I don't know if you can see but there's this sort of like shoulders and feet okay and really it was just about trying to understand you know how like again the shapes and the forms and how, how they, they, how they interplay and, okay. and and mainly uh, you know the green was uh, a personal challenge I, I had like not really liked the color green for right. a very long time. I found it uh, not not really challenging, but it was just a person like I didn't really like it. Right. Uh, but I thought because of that 
it's a, a very good reason for me to really try to and add it to your and add to it. Yeah, to like your palette. yeah, to to challenge myself a little bit to push it. Yeah. Well, when you answer my question of what what yeah. medium are you using, we're talking to Ishan upstairs. Yes. Where when I went to school, a lot of the oil paints were more natural colors, and these are quite vibrant. So yeah. maybe I need to get back into oil painting as well. <laughs> so I'm quite shocked, but when you get up close, yeah. you can see it does have a different texture than yes. acrylic paint. Yes. Yes. And that was uh, another advantage you found. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's interesting that you say that. I think one of the reasons I wanted to get back into oils was. I found the flatness of acrylic a little bit synthetic, right? right? It felt almost like um, what one of my one of my my beliefs as a painter is that painting is essentially a, a form of record. It's like right. evidence of, of that time of your existence, and right. and I felt that like with oil painting it managed to sort of maintain the time right so when you make that mark that mark doesn't really change the the form doesn't change it sort of stays true and and what you said about color it's also similar you know yes. with acrylic it I found that it tended to dry a little bit different a little right. darker uh, and and with oils it just maintained the right. vibrancy yeah. and it is it does take longer because it takes longer to to dry and that can right. be a positive or a negative. We were talking to another artist who tried oil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was saying that because he's a perfectionist there was things he didn't like right. so he could change it whereas acrylic you just have to kind of go over. Right, right, right. But well I, I don't really have an issue with, with you know perfectionism. Right. I, I think uh, your limitations is actually what makes you you, you, your work, your, yours, right. you know, um, if you're looking for perfection, I, I feel like you could go to machines, it's, right? Yeah. Like, it's never ending. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm quite fine. I'm quite comfortable with, um, you know, sort of meeting my limitations right. on, on the work, when in you, the work. And you say, uh, I'm finished now. I don't want to do anything else with yeah, this piece. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's like a the million dollar question, right? right? Everyone's always like, when is the work finished? Yes. It's like, I don't know. And then there's different words too people are saying. They don't say completed. They're saying, I am not doing anything else. Whereas, again, I do print. So, of course, I could keep carving, but right. you print it, it's printed. I, right, could, right. I could do add something, but right. everything could keep going, right? For sure, for sure. So, for sure. Um, yeah. Tessar is Canadian, yes. which is great to meet another Canadian here in Taichung City, Taiwan. He also has his painting in the window here at River Art Gallery, so we will go see that. And you also have these two across the way as well. Yes. Now, should we go over there and see? Is there something with the, the color palette on these ones as well? Is this, again, with the... Trains, well, I mean, you could you could see the underlying train um, drawings um, with with the one on the left that was a little bit of an earlier uh, work. So my right. approach with, with this was actually I was drawing with oil sticks, right? Um, but then this is something that came a little bit later in that sort of uh, process. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. is this periwinkle color? Is that the the oil stick color? Like the, 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 the blue, the sort yeah. of blue, yeah, yes. yeah, that is the oil stick, there's, you can see the black, right. I guess. Um, so that's kind of framing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to, okay. I was trying to play with this idea of, like, the coloring book. Right. Uh, you know, sort of having these drawings and then filling in the spaces and, and again, like, I think, you know, having, having a kid, it's right. like, it's like, constant inspiration. And, right. And it, everything's new. To everything's them. new to them, and, and sort of it, it made me rethink about you know most people would think about coloring books as something very basic, but uh, there's actually a lot of um, decision making and action yes. in coloring, yes. right? And and yeah. I think yeah, and that's kind of meditative and therapeutic, and kind of zone out and right. focus on something. Right. And and I think if you really want to go farther into it, you could sort of extrapolate all these ideas about, you know, what does it mean to stay within the lines right. and, and cross the have to the boundaries. Exactly, yes. exactly. And right. so I, I felt like that that sort of starting point was so rich for for trying to make work. 
right basically and are these yeah. two together is this no they're no. they're not but they are like of the same uh, starting point like right. um, so this again was a little bit earlier but here I'm I had uh, got, you can see some of the line with the green yes but I think I started to go a little bit deeper into the painting and right. less and less like filling in the spaces and actually allowing the paint to sort of do what it needs to do. And it seems very textured as well. Right? Is this levels and layers? Of yeah, there's quite a few layers of the paint. So are you working on something and then you change it and cover it and change the colors? Yeah, it's it's a. I try not to to plan painting too right. much. Like I don't really work in that way, and so I feel almost like it's a conversation so sometimes you say something and and you know the, the, the canvas or the work is sort of coming back to you like I don't really understand what you're saying and you might have to like clarify a little bit and right. sort of like that's when the additional painting happens right and, layers and, and let it see if that's the way you want to yeah, keep it yeah 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 and then it's like maybe we're if we're not coming to an understanding, at least we're coming to a, a compromise. Yes, you know, we agree to disagree. <laughs> agree to disagree, exactly. Yeah, exactly. you let it yeah. marinate a little bit. Yeah. And sometime you've just had enough. Um, my other question is, you mentioned your son. Do you have other people that are looking at your work? Because I find sometimes I hate something. Yeah. The whole reason I did this whole show again after 20 years of not being in art yeah. was because people started seeing my old art and saying you, you should show this okay. so do you find that when you're like oh I've had enough I can't do anymore and some friends or someone who comes and says this is great keep up with it uh, yeah at times I don't think it's a consistent thing like right. I have some friends come by the studio and stuff and, and we do talk about the work Right. At times I will sort of take some of the things they say. Other yeah. times I might just say like that's not what I'm going for anyway. Yeah. So you know it's. I think uh, yeah, definitely I love being able to have conversations around the work. I right. think that's ultimately what art is for: is right. to in, sort of engage in ideas and be a starting point for, for other ideas. Right. And, and it can also be. I always like when someone tells me what they see in my work. Yeah. And it's usually something completely different than what I for sure what I thought sure. about doing in the first yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. That actually gives me a lot of uh, resolve. Maybe it's uh, feeling that you can't really control how the work is going to be received anyway. Right. I think it allows you to really just do what you feel like you need to do. Right. And you know the rest is kind of like it's just up to the universe. Right. What's gonna happen? And see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, Tessar's got a lineup of people to meet him here. It is his opening. <laughs> he also has some fabulous pieces downstairs that we'll go have a look. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mike. Enjoy your time here. We're going to be on Instagram now. <laughs> Next time I go to Canada, I want to see your studio. Yes. Okay. Yes, Enjoy your yes. time. Thank you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. She's very busy. It's her opening of the feast, but she's going to take a few seconds to say hi. Ella, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Yes. Wonderful show. Yes. Now, we met Ella two shows ago. I came in to see the show. You had a North Korean artist. Yeah. And it was wonderful. We tried to see the last show. Yeah. And as you know, in Taichung, all the openings are at the same time. Yes. 
This is our second. We have another opening this afternoon. Everything happens next week. We have to work on Saturday, yes. so everyone's putting it together. We've met Tessar, we've met Ishan. The, the show again is wonderful. The Thank table you. upstairs with the ceramic work. I've got some pottery friends I'm going to send to see that show. Um, is there anything you can tell us about the gallery? How long it's been here? The history of it? Yeah, uh, we have been here around two years. Okay. We just moved back to here about in 2021. Okay. Yeah, so here's a new space for us. So we try to rebrand our gallery to bring more potential artists to show all the collectors and all the people in Taiwan. Okay. That's what I can do. Yes. Yeah. And the last time we met you, you were on your way somewhere, was it Miami or Europe? You were on your way somewhere you had to go. Maybe in the future, probably. Yes. So I wish I can take all the artists to go abroad to participate in many international affairs Affair. such as such as Freeze or yeah. Basel, maybe in the future. Okay. I don't know. But yeah. I need to get more supporting okay. from the collector because yes. you know So buy art. Yeah, buy art okay. because uh, our gallery is not we are a commercial commercial gallery. Yes. So we should get more collector right, to, to come, come in okay. to buy art. Okay. Yeah. So part of the the purpose of this series is to get people out to see things. Yes. So it is Saturday afternoon here in Taichung City. If you'd like to come by, you are open Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday to until Saturday and 1.30 until 6.30. 6.30, so yeah. you have time to come yes. by. But it's a great space, it's very open. You took a, a space and you knocked down all the walls and you put in this staircase here. Yeah. yeah. And there's a skylight at the top. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, we just you. met your dad and we told him as well, I love this building. Thank you. The first day I met Ella, I said, I love it because it feels like we're in New York. Or, yeah, you know? that's what I want to do. Yes. To feel like in the New York, we are a New York gallery. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Because here in Taichung City, we feel like we're the little brother of Taipei. But we've got beautiful spaces yeah. too. And we've got incredible art. So. Ella's very busy. She's got a lineup of people that need her. <laughs> yes. It is her opening night. Thank you yeah, so thank much you. for your thank time. You, and then hopefully sometime we can have a, a chat about upcoming things or any projects you have. Yeah. But we are going to be coming to all the openings here at River Art. It's absolutely fantastic. The space, meeting Ella, you've got a nice little refreshments going on and the work is incredible. So, from Michael at Culture Talking Tours, Ella from River Art Gallery, yes. we will see you on the Bye. next episode. Bye! Bye. Perfect! Thank you.